Now, another very important curriculum activity that you will do with your students are excursions and incursions. Now, an excursion is where you take your students off campus and visit something. It may be a local shop, it may be a local business, it may be um, some in industry, you might go to an airport. Um, there can be a whole range of different types of activities that you can incorporate into your teaching of technologies education. A visit to a farm or a visit to the um, royal show to see the farm animals at the royal show. There can be lots of different opportunities that can arise. Some of these can be more formally organised and there are businesses in place to actually conduct these types of excursions. But in the main, teachers organise it themselves. Now, generally, they're not done by an individual teacher. Even though you might be the instigator of it, you would normally work with other teachers in your year level and they may all come along on the excursion and bring the whole year level. Or at a minimum, you would have more than yourself as a teacher um, go along on the excursion. Now, sometimes you can utilize parents to assist with excursions. So you may be able to then do the excursion yourself with some parental support, but it's very rare to do an excursion just by yourself. Um, there'd be too many students for you to manage safely in terms of a risk assessment to be able to conduct that. So there are things to think about, but don't neglect excursions. There are lots of advantages to them. There are some risks and disadvantages. Um, sometimes there may be a cost involved and that may be prohibitive, but not always. Uh, for myself, I took students on excursion when I was on my practicum as an initial teacher education student. Um, that wasn't very far. It was down the street to the sewage treatment uh, plant where I was teaching science and teaching them about sewage treatment and water treatment. And so it was a nice opportunity to do an excursion. But that's not something that's normally expected of um, on your practicums. But you should always be looking for opportunities to explore the best learning outcomes for your students. And excursions can be definitely one of those. Now, the other side of excursions are what we call incursions. Now, this is where we don't go off campus, that we bring outside experts or farm animals or whatever onto, into your classroom or onto the campus, onto your school, and it's done in that way. So it may be um, contacting the local IT um, company and they bring their computers and virtual reality headsets and whatever else um, to your classroom and show your students about a particular technology. Or it may be a local builder that you invite onto your, um, come to your school. Now there are various um, checks that need to be done around this. One is the blue cards. So generally um, visitors coming into the school have to have um, a check made that they are an appropriate person to work with children. There can be some exceptions around that, particularly if they're parents and so forth. But if there's a particular business that's involved in doing incursions, so there's a couple of companies where they bring robot kits into schools and do activities with students, they would have all had their blue card checks done and so they'd be able to come in and do the incursion without any problems. So there are things to consider around that. Um, none the least is around cost. Of course, particularly if they're a business, there's a cost involved. So using parents for incursions wherever possible can really minimize a lot of issues. And generally you'll have a, quite a good range of parents with different skills that they can come in and work with you, particularly around design and technology, but also increasingly around digital technologies to provide real world examples that your students can engage with. Um, now, one aspect around this is uh, parental and student consent. Generally, you'll need to get parents' consent because the concept of um, in loco parentis is that parents are giving you permission to act as parents while their children are in your care at school. Now, that was a legal requirement set in place when education became compulsory. Of course, before then, the idea of parents giving their children over to someone else to look after was a big, big step for them to take. And that's still enshrouded in, in our legal system. 
So you can't do whatever you want. Um, generally, there is the authority for uh, their children to come into your care at a school and for you to then teach them. But for you to do things in addition to that, for example, an excursion, needs explicit parental permission to do that. Because that's something beyond what they've already consented to. So, but generally parents are quite happy for that to occur. Obviously, if there's a cost involved, that becomes a little bit more complex depending upon your parents and your um, their circumstances. But in the main, if you want to do something different, something exceptional, seeking parental permission um, will then be 99% of the issue. Some other things though, sometimes you should also run it past your principal so that they know what's happening and so forth. That should just be a matter of course. But in the main, you shouldn't let these restrictions hold you back from doing exciting, engaging activities with your students. A couple other things though you do need to be aware of is around privacy, um, particularly uh, issues of photography is one of the big issues around privacy in Australian um, schools. It's not an issue in overseas schools, but it is an issue in Australian schools, uh, mostly because of um, estranged parents and the, the possibility, remote as it may be, that a photograph of a child in a school um, made available, say, on the internet, could be used to identify that child where the estranged parent doesn't necessarily know which school that child is attending. So that's the uh, formal justification given for a lot of the privacy restrictions. But you just need to be aware that those restrictions do exist. And with digital technologies, we can often take digital images or videos or other means of infringing upon students' privacies that could be problematic. So you just need to be aware of the privacy um, rules that are in place in your schools. They're generally fairly uniform across Australian schools now, and they're quite rigorous. So make yourself aware of those. There is a little flow chart that you can look at and sort of see what requirements are needed. Um, but again, just something as a teacher you need to be aware of and ensure that the privacy of your students and of parents are adhered to.